Welcome to the Entrance Garden, friends. This is a most beautiful time of year because, well, it's actually August 1st, so things really get started in my garden. Things are later starting for me because of our cold springs and, and early Junes, but now that they're going, oh, how much fun it is. In a previous video, I showed you how I was using buckwheat, common buckwheat, here's some down here, to improve the soil. So this area is a little bare and I'm working with the soil, but soon um, I'm going to really mulch this area and put in some more pops of color for the rest of the season. We can get blooms through November if it stays warmer. Sometimes in October we'll get a freeze, but not always. So I got some lilies coming up back there. They're protected in pots so the gophers don't bother them. I used to have tons and tons of lilies. Ignore the uh, sound in the background. So roses are gonna get ready to put on a second flush of bloom. My echinacea that comes back, or these reseeded themselves, and they come back every year. If the gophers don't eat them, it's one thing I found out last year that they do love them. So specialty ones I put into pots when I put them in the ground. The bees are loving the black-eyed Susans. Black-eyed Susans also reseed. This is a volunteer here and I just let it have its way. That's what makes filling in the garden easier and cheaper. I can see I need to deadhead. This is my golden celebration rose. Behind it is Graham Thomas and it needs to be deadheaded. I'll do that and give it a good fertilizer, a uh, good dose of it so it can continue to bloom. The Golden Celebration pretty much blooms nonstop, and the day, um, David, the Graham Thomas does uh, in, in spurts. Now the Russian Sage that's leaning over onto it, that really needs to get moved. It struggles to reach for the sun, and so it's always flopping over, and this isn't a good spot for it, so that's gonna get moved. Trial and error in my garden, that's what works for me. I'd give you a view from here of what the entrance or welcome garden is looking like. So, just so gorgeous. This is the 1st of August. I plopped this container of petunias here. I had way too many things on the back deck. It was cluttered. So, I put this here. Underneath it is some coffee grounds I got from a local coffee shop. Um, just spread them here for the hay of it. I had seeded zinnias and cosmos here and they never germinated so either they did come up oh i see one little one that may be coming up right there um and i think either the birds got them or just it wasn't conducive to it this soil's getting worked on so a verbask not a verbaskin what am i saying this is a veronica here pretty uh let me see this is perfectly picasso yes it's a speedwell yep there's a iris there that got tossed aside. I was separating them out. This is one of the flocks from Proven Winners. It's the ones that stay shorter. It had already bloomed. It was in bloom when I got it. I don't think it will re-bloom, but you never know. It may. And let next year, that will be just gorgeous. It'll get um, situated. Here's an, a volunteer cone flower. I don't know what color. Probably be pink. So here is some salvias. I'll look it up. I can't remember their name offhand, but they do beautifully. I had them in the in the uh, Rose Alley last year, and I have one coming back. I can take cuttings of this and start more if I want, and hopefully these will return next year for me. Um, Salvia is it's touch and go for me. So volunteer, uh, um, Rebecca here. And I had some Talias I had in a little tray that I plopped down in the soil. One is not going to do much, I don't think. I could cut it back and see if it recovers. But the other one looks like it's doing okay. And if the gophers leave it alone, I was in a hurry to put it in the ground. And so it's not protected. But another Echinacea volunteer here. The bee. Some Gallardias. The Gallardias do well. I have some lilies down there. Hopefully they're gonna go ahead and bloom. This one is, look at how pretty the blooms are gonna be on that. So this is another one of those flocks from Proven Winners. Uh, I had the tag here, or maybe I took it inside, I don't know, a, another Veronica. This is the Santa Barbara Daisy, Origeron, but 
you know, it flops down. It doesn't do what I wanted it to do, or maybe this just isn't a good spot for it. So I may move that. We'll see. This is my tansy down here. I gave it a good chop back, and it is reblooming a little bit. It's supposed to spread from seed. I love the delicate little daisy-like flowers on it. So this is my Lycanus oculata. This one has a pink hue to it a white with a pink hue here next to my Aglaia daisy. When I did my secret cottage garden, um, I showed you the ones I had back there, and this is a division from them. Very popular with the bees. Here is my front bench that is like my back bench. Just gorgeous up here. As well, I will treat this one as well with a deck stain that is protective. My black lace elderberry, this got moved in the spring, probably at the wrong time. Oak tree behind is not supposed to be there. And so it will get removed. Um, the foxgloves are done. I'll sprinkle out the seeds and then just pull the plants out. And they will start growing, and next year I'll have more. I left, this is Southern Charm Verbascum. Has these pretty little pink flowers white with pink, whatever, creamy color. Anyways, I left one stalk to go to seed. I'm hoping it reseeds so I'll get more of these to spread around. So far, the gophers have left them alone. My oak leaf hydrangea down there coming up slowly but surely. My pink dogwood. It's getting acclimated to its place here. So here are some pretty pink Hollyhocks, they do suffer from rust, but it's the flowers that I enjoy. I'll come and clean off the icky looking leaves here. Now back there is my raspberry budlia. And um, that will get taller and be beautiful back there against the fence. That's my jasmine climbing rose and it's done so well and there's a clematis with it. I have to look up which clematis I put there. So over here, let's look at this Russian sage. It doesn't do well here. It constantly reaches for the sun and flops over. So I'm gonna relocate that or give it away. The same with this yarrow. I may dig up and divide the shorter yarrow that's in the rose alley and plop here, or just do something completely different. Maybe I'll just seed zinnias or something there. This is the, pardon my purple, Monarda from Proven Winners, and it's doing gorgeous here. I need a deadhead, and hopefully it will re-bloom. This Rebecca is kind of funny looking. Got these tiny little flowers. I don't know why it's struggling, but it's still cute. Still cute. Some more salvias down here. I think this was another bargain rack purchase. This one seems to be struggling. I don't know if the irrigation is close enough to it or what. More Rebecca's. This is another volunteer. Look, here's my golden celebration, David Austin Rose. Needs to be deadheaded. Definitely, definitely. Some down there. Those are some dahlias planted in pots. I don't know. I, it'll probably be much later before they bloom. But this bed here is, I'm working on the soil. It's pretty poor soil. So I've got things in here. This is Magic Show Purple Illusion. Um, is that a salvia? Or I think that's a Veronica. Let me look really quick. Veronica, yeah. So we'll see if that reblooms. That just got planted this this season. Here's another volunteer comb flower. Last year, the gophers devastated a lot of mine. So we'll see what happens as the season goes on. These roses are getting ready to rebloom. All of these roses here in these pots, I'm going to relocate. The hide hall here, I may plant in this bed. I haven't decided yet. There's two in there, then I have another one in back. So if I put three up here, it'll be like a hedge, but that's still to be determined. So another bed. This is all volunteer echinaceas. I have white swan mixed in with these Beautiful purple cone flowers. The bees are absolutely feasting on them, which is what you want them to do. Of course, of course. Down here is a cat's pajamas. Nepoda that I cut back 
just a couple weeks ago and it's reflushing, so I think I'm gonna get more beautiful blooms on it. And here's a boxwood I planted here. This is my iceberg, iceberg? Yeah, I think it's iceberg <laughs> uh, rose here. I think this is supposed to be the bush, but it's sure throwing out long canes. And then with it is eglantine, which I think all the eglantines have bloomed out. I need it just deadhead. And they're so uh, close that um, they just blend well together in this container. These are my amazing daisy daisies. Uh, let me see. For proven winters. Yeah, I think they're amazing daisies. Really pretty. They're supposed to bloom longer than my other daisies. I'm going to, I'm giving it a test. This is the first year after they've established that I am having them bloom. Here is a crazy daisy. I started from seed. I love all of the frilly, ruffly petals. And each one is different than I started. So it's always fun to see what you get. So here is the pride and joy of the moment. This is a clematis, and sadly I forgot the name. And I've been trying to look it up. I think I have it in a previous video of what it is. And you see my Eden rose is beginning to bloom with it. See that? Let's go around the other side where there is an open bloom. An open bloom to see how they pair so well. Yes, around here. Isn't this gorgeous? That's just what I had hoped. And you see all those blooms coming. This is the second flush of blooms. Uh, Eden is not a continual bloomer. It blooms uh, in flushes. So having this bloom together is just a win. And you can see there's more blooms coming on the clematis as well. So it's going to be super pretty. Oh, look down here. My phlox is going to get started. Those are always so pretty late in the season. And look at this. This was my bargain rat clematis. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's going to bloom. Going to bloom. I thought I'd almost lost it. Spider mites were getting away from me. So let's go back down into the garden and see what's happening. This gara, it's supposed to be a shorter gara, it's starting to bloom down here in this barrel. Things are taking a little while. I had to plop a bunch of things in here before we left on our trip to Ohio for the Cultivate Show. And um, so they're all recovering from the mistreatment. This is my Anne Boleyn rose. It stays shorter, which I do like. And in the can barrel, is a glatine and one of them died over the winter so here's an other amazing daisy and um yeah it's doing really pretty too this one was planted after the other one i think this one's doing better but i think it gets a little more sun and that's important for daisies so we're, let's look up this way at there is the flocks that are just about to start blooming the little purple flowers coming through everything that's my roseanne geranium which just does stellar there my limelight hydrangea i try to keep it pruned up into more of a tree form but it's loaded with blooms i just got a limelight prime which is supposed to bloom earlier that i'm going to put in a container in the back secret cottage garden but this Delphinium never fails to impress. Look at that color. It's always so tall and gorgeous and blooms and blooms this late in the season. My Kirsten Poulsen rose back there. It's a vintage rose. And this is my Zinfandel hydrangea paniculata. It's also a proven winners. Um, I'm sure you could still find it, but it's, it's the one that goes pink and white too. But um, this obelisk here supporting it. it really got bent over in the heavy snow. So this next fall, I'm going to prune it hard uh, before heavy winter snows hit. And that way it'll prevent it from flopping over. And I got that little tidbit of information from the gentleman in the Proven Winners booth at Cultivate. So look at my Menarda. This I always love with this comes into bloom like this. Yes, I do need to still get in there and deadhead and pull out the foxgloves and separate out some irises. So this spot's kind of, I wouldn't say I call it dead spot, but it doesn't have a lot of pretty color right now. And that's because I'm so late in getting it cleared out of the earlier blooming stuff. And it's just one of those things, it takes time. 
Um, the black-eyed Susans there, they are starting to lean over, and they do that this time of year because they start reaching for the sun. The sun, when it lowers in the sky, it goes behind tall, tall trees, and so I get more shade. So that is why that happens. But I have ways. I have my little um, cages that I put up against them. Here's my butterfly bush. Usually it's bigger at this time of year, but June was super cool. There is uh, some more hollyhocks. Some pretty. I like this pretty light pink color. The ones up in the corner are more of a red. Let me show you up there. And I would prefer to have more of these pink ones for some reason. It just would. So I think I'm going to collect these seeds and spread them up there once these go to seed and see what I get. So here's some verbenia bonariensis that came back from last year. This bed has not been uh, really tackled this summer yet. See, I still have some um, irises that need deadheading and dividing. So some more cone flowers. I do get them here, right here. This down below is rocky. So the gophers really don't go in there and dig things up. So that's, that's a good thing. But that's my creeping fox down there. That's really, really pretty in the spring when I really don't have any other color. But you can see how this is all kind of chaotic. It's just a bed I haven't tackled yet. One bed at a time. Coffee grounds in there. Again, because they are supposed to. Testing it, deter gophers. So we'll see how well it works. Because that is one area that they tunnel along that wall very vigorously. And... My Olivia Austin rose that I dug up, I don't think I've posted the video yet where I dug these up. Um, one had was already um, struggling, and I think the growth is coming from the graft, and I don't want a, the graft. So I'll see when it blooms if it really is from the graft. And then this other one is recovering from being dug up at the wrong time of year. But I have some irrigation to it, so when I turn this on, it gets plenty of irrigation. And this is the other cat's meow, Nepeta. And so I did not prune this back yet because it bloomed later because it's kind of shaded by my Anne Boleyn rose. I had thought that maybe this fall I will move Anne Boleyn up there, up there in front of the obelisk here. So um, that'll be pretty there because I don't think this is a good spot for it but it does do well here. So um, I think up there on the higher hill will be even better because it stays shorter, so it'll just be a real pretty pop of color there. And it does bloom throughout the season. You see it's loaded with blooms right now. I did the lilac vincas along the edge. Ignore the weeds, but along the edge. And here's an idea. This is something that I wanted to throw out there right along the, right in this border, I'm thinking of putting grass. So you have like a green path and I would seed that this October. And then you have a green grass path. I just think that will add just a bit of tidiness, a little more structure and I can edge it and what have you. These petunias, this is salmon wave petunia, isn't it? Or coral reef, I think that's what it is. I just love that color. Love that color. Now the area right back there with the ferns and what have you, that ha needs to be cleared out and thinned and tidied up. So this bed over here is where that other fire ring was that I had tulips and stuff in, and that's where I dug up the uh, Olivia Austin roses from. Um, it just wasn't doing it for me. So I pulled those out and I did seed, or I did put lilies, pink lilies in here. And I think the gophers got them because when we came back from Cultivate, it was all lumpy and hilly after I had made it flat. So I know they'd been in there. So I think they ate all the lilies. But the verbascum I planted, that plant there's verbascum. And then the bonariensis, verbenia bonariensis, it's vanity, is in there. So there's hanging in there. It just looks kind of bare right now. So I was thinking of getting, I have another pot of petunias like the other one I just showed you and I'm going to plop it right there in the middle for some color for now um yeah I'm trying to think of what I could put in here that the gophers won't bother I know they don't bother the 
um, Nepeta, they don't bother. A lot of other things, daisies, I could put some more crazy daisies in here that would be pretty. Um, so this is just a work in progress. Now this is the banana cream, Proven Winners Amazing Daisy. And I love that color. And these are staying shorter than the um, other um, Daisy May Amazing Daisies. Here's another one of those perfectly Picasso um, Veronica's. The other one didn't have the blooms. I had sheared it back already. This one I planted last year. And the one I showed you in the other bed, I just planted this year, but it shows how it fills in. And it shows the gophers did not bother it, which is a win. Now these ones down here, these are sprawling in the middle. So I think that's a habit of some things. I need to deadhead it, cut it back, and then maybe it'll reflush, or I just need to move it. And that might be something I could put towards the center rather than along the edge here. Last year I had petunias along here, wave petunias, and they did great. So I may do that again next year. This is still a place in waiting. This is where I'm going to put this bed right here. I am going to put my strawberry bed. Now in the back, I have what's called um, Eversweet. They are so, so yummy, so sweet and ever bearing. And they get, the berries get right, quite large. I also have a bunch of, um, what are sequoias. Those are June bearing and I'll put them in here, but I'll divide it in half. That way um, I'll know which ones are which when they first come up. This area also is getting revamped. I think I'm gonna move the peonies. They don't do great here. I don't think they get enough sun, but I'm not sure. I may move them to a new garden I may be putting in. And it's gonna be a lot of roses back there too. So I'll take you around the other side and you can see it from the roadside. I told you I'd get the garden from this side. Look at these volunteer hollyhocks. They're doing great by this corner. And down here, my Rosandrinium. Isn't this beautiful? I love this thing. Look how tall it has gotten and then it comes forward. And this was a fun little experiment. Right here, I decided to put a couple of zucchini plants because this is, um, this area gets a lot of hot sun and it is just a way to utilize the space even better. And look, they make beautiful plants. So let me see if I got any zucchinis. I think I do. Oh, there's a little baby one down in there. Oh, let's see if I can spot it in my camera. Oh, there it is, right there. Doesn't look too healthy. I wonder what's going on. But then there's another one coming. Let's see, right down there. That's focusing for you, I hope. Let me see over on this other one. Maybe there's one. Okay, yeah, there's a couple coming down in there too. So I'm gonna have some wonderful zucchini. You know how fast they will all of a sudden be big enough to pick and eat, so I'll keep a watch on them. And um, this rose, my Christian Poulsen rose hasn't been doing great this year. I have a new spray. It's completely organic and beneficial friendly for fungus and other things. So I needed to get up here and use it. It's made with botanicals, so it's supposed to be completely safe. Look at, here's my Zinfin doll getting ready to bloom, hydrangea. I had to prop it up with the arbor. It, the snows really had knocked it down. Now these are all volunteer plants here in front. Um, as they go over, I will pull them out because they just were, as I said, volunteers. And I don't know what got in here and smashed these daisies over. But um, I don't know that they're gonna be worth propping up because there's so many over here. I may just go ahead and cut those way back and or dig them out. So back here, look, this is the direction of this monarda. Isn't that beautiful how it's filled in? This is the patch where I had a bazillion of a particular iris and I was gonna get in there and thin it out and I just haven't gotten to it yet, but I won't disturb it too much with the uh, monarda going great bee balm. My butterfly bush, it's usually much bigger than this by this time of year, but the cool June we had, well, we've even had cooler than normal weather the last week or so, or many people have been getting heat waves. But, oh, and these pink hollyhocks, those are also a volunteer. Beautiful. My happy chappy rose kind of gets hidden behind all these taller growing things. 
Um, but it's beautiful. It changes color as it ages, and I need to get in there and deadhead it so it can really shine. This was my compost bin where I had my DIY compost bin, and I had to pull out one of those zucchinis, and I plopped it over here on top. And um, because I was too lazy to move this pile of compost that wasn't completely done. So the zucchini's recovering. And then over there, it looks like a volunteer hollyhock's coming up, but I also seeded some zinnias in here. So we'll see how that works. I was hoping the zinnias would fill in and just make this a little bit prettier because it's not, it's kind of homely, but it's working. It is working. Down here, this area is, is doing beautiful. My lavenders that I thought I had killed, they're coming back just beautiful. Um, this is the division of the Elkie hardy geranium I took last year and put here because it, it stays shorter. Another uh, lavender that's doing great here. Some volunteer flowers that are flopping. I think they might get a little too much water or they're reaching for the sun. Look at that crazy daisy back there. This one is super frilly and crazy, but short petals. So over here, also I have a Russian sage, but it wants to flop like the one in front. So I'm not sure, I just think they get too tall. I'm gonna move them, I think, to the back hillside where I'm gonna put more roses and turn into a rose slash cottage garden back there. But, so this is the side, roadside part of the welcome or entrance garden in early August.